Welcome to the next installment of Sir Sam, The Lost Stories. I just figured out that I missed three stories. I think it was because our neckbeard stories was offline for a while. Now that it's back, here's your second story. Here we go. Hello everyone, it's Lady Saber, back for another installment of Sir Sam the Chivalrous. We're pretty far along this point in our story, but let's go ahead and introduce the characters again. Player 1, Lady Saber. I'm from across the narrow sea. I'm a foreign exchange student, slowly learning how to America. I've always relatively been an outdoorsy person, but finding people to do that kind of stuff with is pretty tough. I've got a lot of experience in backpacking, biking, and skiing in Europe, but none here. I'm also Catholic, so to the meeting, I wear cutoffs and a tank top with my favorite leather jacket. Player number two, my boyfriend, John. He lives pretty far out in the country, and his favorite outdoor things aren't very different from mine. He dresses like a normal person, except for that obnoxiously large belt buckle. He has dark short hair, and he stands about 5'10", which is a thumb above Sam, and he has a southern accent that I could listen to all day. Player number three, for some reason, keeps being Sir Sam the Chivalrous, the smoothest cheek neckbeard of all. He has absolutely no experience outdoors of any kind, but that has no bearing, of course, on his ability to be the best and most informed camper the world has ever known. He's fatter than your average Tumblr user. He has a very squeaky, high-pitched voice, and he usually reeks of death and acts newest body spray, eau de douche. He's terminally diagnosed with a nice guy syndrome, prone to outbreaks of euphoria. For those of you who don't know, venture scouting is a lot like boy scouting, but there are some major differences. For one, it's co-ed, so it's both guys and girls. Additionally, it's for an older group, mainly 14 to 21, and we do high adventure stuff, not like the boy scouts, because they're only allowed to do silly things like safety. John has been doing venture for a long time. It wasn't really hard for him to convince me to come with him. We discuss it at school. He gives me the information, and I agree to show up. I've got a few friends in various clubs that I thought might be interested, so I make an announcement to go on the board at the French and Go Club. Uh-oh. Do you hear that? It sounds like the nail tipping its way into the coffin. Sunday afternoon rolls around, and my host mother gives me a ride to the church. This is where we held the meeting. It's slightly early, but I go inside and meet a few people who are already there. One of the adults gives me a membership packet. It's about five pages long. It's mostly demographic information and some reading about the program. So I tuck myself away in a corner. That way I can write up against a wall. I'm pretty engrossed in the material, and more people start to arrive. Before long, I'm interrupted. Hey, Lady Saber! Oh, Jesus Christ on a tricycle. Here? Uh, Sam! He made even less of an effort for this meeting. He's wearing a dark hoodie with a stretched out frocket, accessorized with weird stains, cargo shorts filled to busting with euphoria and atheism, and a small green trilby perched atop his head. I still have no idea how many of those things he has. Yeah, I saw the flyer you left at the Go Club. Too bad I wasn't there to see you, huh? You look dashing today. Well, he's fishing for an ego boost, but I refuse to bite. Ha, <laughs> I didn't know you were into outdoor stuff. That was a subtle neg. What? Like camping and sh**? Yeah, that's easy. I've been doing it since I was a kid. What's that paper thingamabob? It's an application to join the crew. You should grab one from one of the adults. He retrieves a packet from the crew advisor. And he pulls over a chair and plops down beside me, panting from the effort. He's relatively focused, on me at least, covertly glancing at my thigh while reading. It isn't until he gets into the Venture Club's oath that he stops. As a venturer, I promise to do my duty to God and to help strengthen America to help others and to seek truth <laughs> and fairness and adventure in our world. Oh, Lady Saber, have you read this venture old thingamabob? Yeah. I can't believe they want us to conform to this shit. I mean, I know you're religious, but even you've got to see that it's stupid, right? I'm not in the mood for this conversation today. 
You know you can't be here if you're an atheist, Sam. What do you mean? I mean they won't let you join. That's retarded. I should be able to do whatever I want. It's just the rules, Sam. With that, I excuse myself and return the packet to the crew advisor, hoping beyond hope that Sam's euphoria will overcome his fixation on me. The membership fee is $50, but I'm told not to worry about it for now. As I finish speaking with the crew advisor, someone taps me on the shoulder from behind. Lady Saber? Not exactly the voice I was expecting. I turn on my heels to find myself face to face with Sam's mother. Mrs. Sam! Hey, it's great to see you here. Sam told me you invited him to this little event. Was it at that club y'all started together? My brain started to struggle. The wait through all the BS that I imagined that Sam was feeding his mother. I was only able to address part of it. Go club? Uh, yeah, I made an announcement, but I don't think Sam was there. I just left a flyer. Oh, well, it still sounds like a neat little thingy. I had no idea that groups like this existed. Do you go camping much? Yes, I have a lot of experience back home, but none here. Well, Sam will have a great teacher. He's never been. I don't know where this sudden interest came from, but it should be a good exercise. I have an inkling where the interest comes from, but I kept my mouth shut. And Mrs. Sam excuses herself while the meeting begins. John at long last arrives. I pinch him for straining me with Sam. Neither of us expected him of all people to show up. Sam remains at a safe distance while the meeting gets underway. There's about 15 people present, evenly split between guys and girls, with about five or so being adults. Sam and I get introduced together in front of everyone. I'm first. I speak a little bit about my experience back home and why I'm interested in joining the crew. Sam introduces himself with a flourish, fully removing his trilby for the swooning of all the miladies present. He talks too loud for the small room, regaling everyone at length how much he loved camping. And I'm so glad that my good friend, Lady Saber, invited me here. I grimace. The two of us get a smattering of applause and I exit stage right. During the meeting, we sit around folded tables, and they're arranged in an irregular polygon. Sam sits across from me, staring daggers into John, while two people give short presentations on how to pack your backpack. To acquiesce my lady's attentions, he makes utterly hilarious comments. No one laughs. They're clearly unable to appreciate the jest of a superior intellect. Weight is super important. Your pack shouldn't be more than 30% your own body mass. So bring only what you need. Does that include <laughs> textbooks? What? <laughs> well, you said your backpack shouldn't weigh more than 30%. Should I put my textbooks in there or no? Sam's grinning like the Cheshire cat in spite of himself. The poor presenters have no idea how to handle this gracefully. So all they can say is, um, well, it's not a school backpack. So, um, you really don't need textbooks. So... Oh, <laughs> I was wondering why I needed to bring all that stuff to school. He continues the entire time, stretching out the presentation like a victim of the Spanish Inquisition. Sam glances at me to gauge my reaction after each and every punchline. By the end, everyone is all cringed out and more than thankful to move on. The crew planned on going backpacking and fishing at the end of the trip, which is planned well in advance so we can be prepared. There are multiple loops we can take to get where we need to go, and a few topographical maps are passed around. And we quickly narrow down our choices of two trails. That's the length that we want, and to avoid steep grades. I peek over at Sam, who has been studying his map for some time, slowly tracing his finger over the paper. He raises his hand to get the crew president's attention, and he asks, What about this route I found right here? No one else saw it. It goes right through the house, and it doesn't curve all over the place. He hoists his map into the air, just like a Targaryen banner, and he plants his sausage finger firmly in the center. A few people crowd around to examine exactly what we've all missed. I glance back at my map that's on the table, and after a few seconds, Sam's foolish grin is overshadowed by the confused scowls. He appears to have found the trail that only smart people can see. Sorry, dude. I don't see what you're pointing at. What? How? It's like right there! He jabs at the map with his finger, shaking it like San Francisco in the early 1900s. Um, dude, 
That's a topography line. What? No, it's a trail. That's what the black snaky lines are. Everybody knows that. The trails are the dotted lines. The solid lines are topography. It shows elevation change. I know that. I was pointing at the, you know, the, uh, you know what? Screw it. Just forget it. You don't see what I'm pointing at. There's a brief pause as everyone eyes each other to confirm that that just happened. Sam slouches back into his chair, struggling to hide his deflation. The crew votes to take a longer route in favor of a more shallow grade. All told, it's about a 20 kilometer loop. When the president asks for a show of hands on who plans to attend, Sam looks at me first before raising his hand too. There's a question asked about what food we'll be eating, and the response is only, Philmont rations. I have no idea what that means, but everyone else apparently does, so I stay quiet. Sam naturally knows. Oh man, those are the best! After finishing our planning, the crew circles up to hold hands for a short closing prayer. I pity the girls who had to hold the hand of Sir Sam, but I'm still thankful it wasn't me. As everyone starts to pack up and leave, I stay back to talk to the crew advisor. John helps the others put away the tables and chairs. So Sam seizes a chance to get close to my lady. He stands right behind me while the crew advisor and I talk, and he's mouth breathing heavily. Sam, do you have a question for me? Um, no. Lady Saber asked what I was going to ask already. Before leaving, with Sam on my heels, John and I share a heartfelt goodbye. See ya, loser. Later, face. There was a noted lack of chivalry afterwards, but once I got home, this little gem was waiting for me, and it goes as follows. I simply can't comprehend in any condition why brilliant, charming women constantly choose to court rubbish boys with a complete sense of deference or class toward them. Sincerely, one has to contemplate the unfortunate reality that most females simply don't covet a man who grasps the true worth. I'm with you. The number of girls I see with random douchebags who probably beat them on a regular basis makes me lose faith in humanity. Precisely. When a woman can be publicly demeaned by her so-called boyfriend and she chooses to remain with him, I grew despondent for nice guys everywhere who actually desire a meaningful relationship. This. Too bad our generation only cares about hookups and notching the bedpost rather than finding someone who matters. I wouldn't date a girl who lets her boyfriend smack her around. She's probably just a desperate slut who wants attention. A desperate slut who wants attention is literally 90% of the girls in my school. Thank you very much for joining me for this edition of Sir Sam The Lost Stories. We've got one more to go, and I'll have that up for you soon. Thank you again, and until next time, have fun with your failures, or they'll have fun with you.